Coming up on tonight's broadcast, red carpet burns at the 2005 Qantas TV Awards. The stars, the paparazzi, the backstage shenanigans. We put some of our top broadcasters to a racially charged talkback test and an undercover, underhanded experiment. And political correctness eradication gets underway with a bold new initiative. <laughs> Good evening. The Qantas Media Awards used to be the night of nights for journalists and the chimps who make shows like Sunday and 60 Minutes. But now the night's expanded to include women's magazine favourite celebrities, reality TV shows and even big budget shows made in America. I was feeling a little queasy about tonight, partly because I was up late following a slap-up barbecue with Sainsbury. Spiro Anastase, Yusa High Tiffin and Tui Paloa Evan Charlton. Something had gone down the wrong way. I think it was the chicken. <coughs> like Hollywood before the Oscars, or Mecca before the Hajj, Auckland City is electric with anticipation as the stars come out for the 2005 Qantas Media and TV Women's Day Award Jamboree. Pretty poor turnout for the fans, don't you think, today? Yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. Pitiful, uh, pitiful. At first I didn't know what was going on, then I saw that lady off that show, you know, the druggy Westy show, whatever it was. Outrageous fortune. Yeah, that's it. The red carpet is a recent addition to the local media landscape like a bait catcher for celebrities, funneled in for maximum hag-rag paparazzi exposure. The Sprats are helpless bait for the waiting snappers. The lucky ones make it through unscathed, but for some, the dazzling lure of the microphone is too hard to resist. Um, just one question, why are you such a fuckwit? Um... Favourite TV programme this year? Um, oh, I always watch the news, if I can. Favourite television programme of the year? Favourite television programme of the year? I can't think. Excuse me, Kate. Are you sure? Favourite drug bus celebrity? Favourite drug bus celebrity? <laughs> um, oh, there are so many, where do you start? Were you involved in it? <laughs> oh, I couldn't possibly comment on that one. Drug bust celebrity. The favourite drug bust celebrity. Almost you. They were all there. That's um, Peter from the... Uh, Mark Ellis. Uh, Coxie. Don't know. Uh, that's the guy from three, I think. That's you at Barnsley. I know you at Barnsley. And that's Stephen, someone from... Have you ever had sex while watching yourself on the screen? Before? Not yet, but I aim to before the year's out. Have you ever done it while watching yourself on TV? Um, no, no. <laughs> no. No, I've never had the honour of doing that, no. No, I never have. No. I can safely say. <laughs> <laughs> no. Done much. <laughs> had a root. I think it's time to leave now. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Is that a yes? <laughs> That's definitely a yes. I'm very embarrassed now. <laughs> Best mouth.
Maori on TV? Best Maori on TV, or I wouldn't say no. I might get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I could tell you my favourite. Mm, I don't know. Best Maori on TV this year? Um, um, yeah, the race card. It's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, you know actually, what? you know what? Waka. I like Neil. Waka. Is he Maori? <laughs> or is he from the islands? <laughs> In recent years, TV award shows have tended to be boring, badly produced, and tucked away late at night. But that hasn't always been the case. In the 1980s, the famous Gofter Awards were a sensational shambles. Later, ye wearer of the silver suit. And before that, things were even better. In those days, the awards were a big deal. They were flashy, they were fun, and they were sponsored by Carpet. Since their inauguration in 1969, Feltex Television Awards have been presented to encourage the production within New Zealand of programmes for television to the highest standard. It's all show business, kid. These awards, the whole world, show business. And kid, even you can be a star. Just remember, give them the old Razzle a dazzle, razzle dazzle em. There was glitz and glamour, dancing and even songs. Doesn't mean we'll get the chance again to sing and dance like in the golden days in local television. They had international guests. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Seacomb. <laughs> Miss Cilla Black. Even royalty came to the party. This is Princess Alexandra, who was brought in specially to sit on a chair. Every muscle in the whole of your body is rigid like steel. You are a sheet of steel. And, and one I'm year, they even hypnotised poor old Bob relaxed. Parker. But somewhere along the way, we lost the glitz, the glamour, the songs and sequins, the razzle-dazzle, and ended up with Jason, Petra, and Charlotte. Oh well, on with the show. And the award goes to Robin Malcolm. Three news. Anthony Starr, our Raiders fortune. Dancing with the stars. Four little May. Intrepid Journeys. Janet McIntyre. Mark Sainsbury. Off the rails. Mark Ellis. Colin McCann, I am. 60 Minutes. Shortland Street. Brotown. Elizabeth Mitchell, producer. Thank you very much for making racism acceptable again in New Zealand. Oh, it had to be done. Not enough people, everyone was pussyfooting around. But if you just see someone and you, you know they're a car munch, you just say it, just say it with love. Yeah, fun. but we don't like to think it's making racism acceptable, more making prejudices more yeah. honest and open. Yeah, we just want everyone to hate each other equally yeah. all the time. Because if you hate everyone the yeah. same, then we're all equal. Yeah. yeah. TV Journalist of the Year, that's the biggest award of the year. Yes, apparently. Interesting, because that do you know that Qantas are the only, like, pretty much the only um, airline in the world that haven't had a crash? They haven't oh, had really? one single crash. No. Well, I'll be taking their flight. So, well, statistically speaking, um, they're pretty much due. They're due. Oh, they're totally due for a big one. How much does John Campbell get paid? I believe it's in the vicinity of about four million. I've got no idea. What about a guess? I reckon about half a mil, though. Yeah. Half a mil? Do you think so? Well, that's what the general consensus is around the place tonight. You reckon? Yep. Some people saying 650. Full part. He'd be disappointed if he didn't get as much as Susan Wood, I would have thought. Half that, a mil? I've got no idea. Half a mil? Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> Still to come. We put some of our top broadcasters to a racially charged talkback test in an undercover, underhanded experiment and say goodbye to political correctness.
the hullabaloo about brethren and testicles, there was one election promise that was overlooked. Winston Peters talked about reducing the length of pofery or traditional Maori welcome. It's an idea that probably would have found favour with many impatient Pākehā if anyone had taken it seriously. But how open are our broadcasters to extended welcomes in Toreo? We decided to test the patience and cultural awareness of some of our leading talk professionals. Um, yes, where are we going? First up, indeed? talkback oh, host Don, and mayor, uh, Michael Laws. Let's go and talk to Hector. Hector, good morning to you. Kia ora, Michael. <coughs> tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. OK, see you later, stupid man. Hello, James, good morning to you. Laws allowed six tēnā koutous, but insulted our caller and his culture. He also has a bad aura. Have you come up with some good things? Well, firstly, I haven't, no, but the league certainly has. <laughs> about 25. About Murray Deeker and Dean Lonigan can deal with most situations, but will they have the patience for our caller? He had the whole lot there. Maybe someone on the line. Hector, you got a question for Dean? Yeah, g'day, g'day, Murray. G'day, cowboy. Uh, look, I just wanted to say, uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Now you get your point. What, what, what are you trying to say here, boy? <laughs> He is definitely stirring you, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your mates? Oh, I'm sure. No? You're not sure of it? I'm not sure of that. That's the strangest phone call I've ever had in media. <laughs> but hang stop. on, you're the strangest person I've ever had. and show. Cowboy so, let through 6.5 Tenakotos. They seem jolly, but referred to our caller as a boy, considered by some to be a racist term. Next up, News Talk ZB's king of common yeah. sense, Leighton Smith. Nice, huh? 11 past 11, News Talks Abbey, Hector, morning. Kia ora, Leighton. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. OK, that's enough. Tēnā koutou. Thank you. 11 past 11, News Talk ZB. Now, I was going to talk about mangroves. I thought, I thought he had a story... And he was great off here, but he lost the plot. Leighton allowed seven Tenokotos. OK, that's enough. And let an additional one slip through. Tenokoto. Then he became disorientated and started rambling about mangroves. Mangroves. But here's a quick tip that really works. Lift your feet off the floor and simply pump your feet up and down quite vigorously. This really helps to reduce swelling. Move to the front Kerry of the Kerry Smith can certainly handle in-flight information with aplomb. But how will she cope with the Tenakoto challenge? And it will help relieve any tension in the lower back area. Rotate your shoulders backwards. And that will help any stiffness between the shoulder blades. Alana, hi. Hi, Kerry, how are you? We're great. Good. Um, I was just wanting to ask you, Jackie, I've recently got engaged and I'm also looking for a new job. Kerry was conducting a session with psychic Jackie Pope. But will they be able to foresee the cultural significance of the challenge they're about to face? Hector, hello. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Hi, how can we help? Tēnā koutou. Hello. Oh, I think we've lost Hector there. Kerry allowed only four tēnā koutous, hung up on our caller and lied about it. Hello. Oh, I think we've lost Hector there. But she does have a lovely voice. And welcome back to City Talk. Back. South yeah, Islanders have a reputation for being dismissive of Maori culture. Let's see how they handled the Tenakoto challenge at Southland TV. We're going to go straight to the phones and take a call from Auckland and say good evening to John. Kia ora. Tenakoto, Tenakoto. Southland TV allowed a staggering 18 Tenakotos. They were patient, and although they laughed at our caller, Shadbolt does have a nice smile. Whilst the South Islanders showed the most patience, 
they were also the most bewildered. A disappointing end to our experiment. Still to come, political correctness eradication gets underway with a bold new initiative. But why is local media ignoring the story? To the celebrity share market now, and Peters calls the Herald traitors, so they launch Bauble Watch. Cockroach eating Cocroft slips another past the goalie, morning sickness. The wicked keeper in hot water over a legal pool, RMA. Overhyped pandemic sees demand for file footage of dead birds soar. And Borat gets a gun pulled on him after asking a male masseur for a happy finish. I have no arms. Hello, my name is Paperboy. Do you know why they call me Paperboy? It's because I'm made of paper. And I'm a boy. Look. Special high quality paper. My name is Blobby Buttick Smudge. Do you know why they call me Blobby Buttick Smudge? Is it short for Robert? No. Much. Arm for the poor. Our media were quick to pour scorn, ridicule, bile and several shades of shit on the National Party appointment of Wayne Mapp as its political correctness eradicator. But the North Shore MP has taken to the task with stealth and resourcefulness. For two weeks he's overseen the spraying of one of our most politically correct suburbs, and already it seems to be working. And while this extraordinary story has barely been reported by local media, it's been big news across the Tasman, and was last week's lead story on the ABC's flagship current affairs programme, Four Corners. Grey Lynn, central Auckland. Locals call it Gay Lynn. You won't find any rednecks here. This multicultural suburb is well known as a hotbed of political correctness. And some say it's political correctness gone mad. Uh, I've been working in the Greyland area for a number of years now and uh, I was on a routine metre reading at Greyland Normal when it happened. Uh, it was the full welcome. I believe they call it the Wiru. A Wiru is a traditional Maori welcoming ceremony. Believe it or not, bylaws require that all visitors to the local school must receive the welcome, even a humble meter reader. <clears throat> is this PC gone mad? Yeah, I reckon it is. And uh, it's, nice, it's nice to be, you know, welcomed, but uh, I'm here to do a job and I just question whether, do you need to do that? It was this incident that would become the catalyst for the New Zealand National Party's ambitious new campaign. Aerial spraying for political correctness has now begun. The National Party's spokesman for the eradication of political correctness, Wayne Mapp, personally flew the first mission. I'm just pleased they're doing something about it. The potential side effects of the spray are thought to be cancer and inflammation, which has some locals worried. What do you think? Oh, good. I think it's, I really hate it. I mean, I, I didn't want to go up today, but 
I'm going to have to. The thin, pretty dust leeches out such lunatic PC notions as racial harmony, humanitarian concerns and tolerance of homosexuality. Glenn Brook lives in the spray zone. He believes the chemicals have affected him for the better. Well, I used to collect for Greenpeace. Um, I was a member of SAFE, Save Animals from Exploitation. Worked on the uh, Milkers Rape campaign. Don't know if you remember. Um, I shopped at Trade Aid and uh, I used to be a vegetarian. Glenn believes the spraying has completely changed his outlook. I'd never tasted skin before. Oh, that's bloody good. What's your opinion on immigration? Oh, I mean, it's all right in theory, but, um, I don't know, it just doesn't work. You can't talk to these people. Hello? Speak English? See, they don't want to integrate. What about the disabled? Do you think enough has been done for the disabled in this country? Fucking disabled. I mean, we bend over backwards for the disabled. I mean, what does it need? Is it bicycles for the deaf? And I think there's a huge danger in it. It's 13 after 10. Glenn, good morning. Yeah, good day, Leighton. The documentary right. will screen you know, look, in full next more, Tuesday I mean, on TV One. The country's turned into one big charity for Mari. And... and that's our show. Coming up next week, a compendium of conspiracy theories. 9-11, chemtrails and Hitler. We grill the believers and the sceptics in a report that will shock you to the very core. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch. Sainsbury's parties. In an industry at number 71. Are all too eager to tell us where we went wrong. This is the one night of the year when we focus on the things we did right. It was Pete Sinclair versus a smoke machine at the 1982 Feltex Television Awards. And nominees from this category will be appearing throughout the show. Uh, in addition to this, our producer threatens us threatens us with what he, uh, it's very foggy down here in Christchurch, as you may have noticed. Winter has arrived early this year.